This is the story of Final Fantasy XIV, patch 3.3, Revenge of the Horde. Now, where we left off at the end of patch 3.2, there was a peace conference in Falcon's Nest, but Nidhogg, possessing Astinian's body, crashed the party and severely wounded Vidofnir. Let's get started. Alfino and the hero meet Kryle and Yshtola at the Forgotten Night to discuss Astinian. Both Kryle and Yshtola say that they've observed some hint of Astinian still lingering in the ether of Nidhogg. Yes. Tis like that Estinian spirit yet lingers. Can we not wrest him from Nidhogg's grasp then? Tear the eyes from the armor? Yshtola is unsure, but Alfino says he would be the first to tear Nidhogg's eyes from Estinian's armor. Even should you succeed in excising the eyes from the dragoon's mail, we have no way of knowing if your friend's soul would survive so violent a separation. And that is to say nothing of the possibility that his would-be savior might become Nidhogg's next host. Alfino insists, even at the risk of his own soul. Just then, Anaroi approaches them with a message. The Lord Commander humbly requests the company of the Warrior of Light and Master Alfino. Come then, Sir Emmerich awaits. As they depart, Kryl pleads with the hero to keep an eye on Alfino, who may be letting his feelings cloud his judgment. Mini Midgard Sormir appears briefly to ask rhetorically if it's right for them to focus more on saving their friend than defeating their enemy, then vanishes. My friends. I thank you for coming. Sir Aymeric says that now that Nidhogg has both of his eyes, no mortal force will be enough, and they will need an ally of equal strength. You speak of grace, Felga. To whom else could we turn? Both acknowledge that this may be impossible, as Hrace Velger is averse to interfering in the affairs of men, but they must try regardless. Whatever price the dragon asks of me, I shall pay it. Such was my oath, to defend the people of Ishgard. He asks if they will try. We will, my lord, though I fear our involvement offers no guarantee of success. Thank you. Both of you. Sir Aymeric is traveling with them, and Alfino says they should first head to Annex Trine to speak with Vidofnir. At Annex Trine, Sir Aymeric begins by apologizing to Vidofnir for failing to protect her at the conference. She says she was tempered for battle before his grandfather learned to crawl, then says there will be no peace while Nidhogg lingers. Alfino says it is for this reason they seek to petition the aid of Hrace Velger, which Vidofnir says is folly but leaves them to it. Approaching Zenith, Sir Aymeric marvels at the sight as a Mughal approaches. The hero explains their purpose and the Mughal says the winds are in their favor for blowing the horn, so they continue their path. They blow the horn to summon Hrace Velger at Zenith. Greetings, Hrace Velger. I am Emmerich de Burel, acting ruler of the nation of Ishgard. Hrace Velger says he already knows why they're here, and that it's not only Nidhogg who is hurt by the Ishgardian betrayal, but himself as well. We understand that in your despair at man's betrayal, you seek only the refuge of solitude. But despite your protestations of spent faith, do you not still nurture the smallest flame of hope? He asks Grace Velger why he let Yazale ride him, and he says her unquenchable passion reminded him of his beloved. It seems to me that you have not, in fact, lost faith in mankind as a whole. Rather, you weigh our respective merits by how we allow the past to influence our future. Grace Velger protests the idea of attacking his own kin, and Sir Aymeric responds by saying he had to oppose his own father, the Archbishop. Thus. Did I order his execution, sparing the lives of my people and yours? Alas, your brother Worm now prepares to murder those whom I sought to spare. What is more, he has taken my comrade's body for his own. But if I must slay my dearest friend to defeat my direst foe, I will not flinch from my duty. Mini Midgard Sormir appears and supports them, saying Nidhogg is only a shade of his former self. Grace Velger says he will test them at the site where Radataskar fell and he leaves. Riding on dragons sent from Hrace Velger, the heroes fly to Sor Kai where Radataskar was slain a thousand years ago. They confront Hrace Velger to prove their worth. After a good fight on floating rocks in the sky, the dragon is convinced and stops the trial to talk. He tells the hero that Heidelin chooses her servants well and agrees to give mankind one last chance. In front of all of them, he swears an oath to end Nidhogg's wrath. Later, as Aymeric and Alfino speak about their trials with Hrace Velger's children, the Mughals approach and congratulate them on their victory. Then they leave. "'Twas your stalwart heroism that moved the heart of the Great Worm at the last. Any gratitude I can offer is but poor reward for your continued service to Ishgard." Alfino says they are ready and just wish they knew when Nidhogg was about to strike, but they hear a roar and Mini Midgard Sormir appears to say it begins now. "'We must away to Ishgard. 
Grace Felger and his two children arrive to fly them home. Remember your training! We hold fast until the Lord Commander returns. Reinforcements! By the Fury. That one is the size of Nidhogg. Lord Commander! Grace Felger demands Nidhogg stop the assault, saying the Ishgardians know the truth and wish to make amends. Nidhogg mocks him and says his beloved has clouded his judgment. Grace Felger furiously says not to speak of her, and Nidhogg attacks. Holding Race Felger's wing in his jaws and standing on his body, Nidhogg mocks Race Felger's weakness, but Race Felger reveals he lent his eye to another. Wielding an eye of Race Felger, the hero confronts Nidhogg at the final steps of faith. After an extraordinary fight, Nidhogg kneels, defeated in the form of Astinian. Astinian! Me! I will not allow it! I am of the first brood. I am vengeance incarnate. I am Nidhogg. Thou shalt die by my hand. This is not your hand, worm. Thou wilt obey. I would ask one last favor of you, warrior of light. Finish me. Now, while I have the beast subdued! Lucia, summon the healers. I want them ready to receive him. Sir Aymeric picks up Estinian, and Hrace Felger approaches to say that when Nidhogg died, the entire horde scattered and fled. You have my gratitude, Hrace Felger. Your deeds this day have saved a great many lives. The dragon wishes them a swift recovery, then flies away. The heroes of the hour return. The Count offers the heroes a place to rest, but Alfino says he wishes to visit the infirmary and he leaves. Our master Alfino has grown. The plight of his stricken brother in arms pains him more than his own hurts. The hero leaves after Alfino. The hero finds Sir Aymeric, who tells him that he and Astinian go back ten years to when they were both new recruits. He says Astinian's harsh words make him the perfect older brother figure for Alfino, and he can understand why he looks up to him so much. A knight barges in and says they must head to the infirmary at once. Cease your mewling, boy. It grates my ears. Now, now, Astinian. If Master Alfano thought any less of you, you would still be Nidhogg's plaything. Or dead. Estinian thanks them and says they've accomplished the impossible. He then talks about Nidhogg's boundless hatred and rage that he could feel during that time. It was the very image of my own heart. There I saw the dark reflection of the hatred I felt after Nidhogg slew my family. When no path remained save vengeance against Dragonkind. He then says that the difference is that he had friends to console and admonish him where Nidhogg did not. Otherwise, he may have been consumed by vengeance just like Nidhogg. Lord Commander, my hunt is at an end. I would lay down the mantle of Azure Dragoon. He falls asleep and the heroes leave. 
Sir Aimeric calls an assembly and reforms the government of Ishgard completely. He ends rule by Archbishop and instead forms the House of Lords and the House of Commons, so Ishgard may be ruled by highborn and lowborn alike. The revolution is a peaceful one and all are in agreement, including ambassadors of dragonkind. Sometime later, Count Fortant compiles a book of tales of the Warrior of Light. Meanwhile, at the infirmary, That evening, Aymeric makes idle chatter with the hero, musing over the fact that the bastard son of the archbishop would become the head of the House of Lords. He also says Astinian left the infirmary and hopes the hero runs into him again one day. Somewhere in the Twelves Wood, the Warrior of Darkness and Elidibus discuss their plans, but an eavesdropper is spotted. As Thancred helps the eavesdropper escape, Elidibus is not bothered by it. And patch 3.3 ends there. If you want to see what happens next, check out the video for patch 3.4. See you next time.